Uh oh. Let me turn the camera back on here. Maybe. Give me just one second here and get your camera going. It was on. I just pushed the wrong button. All righty. Let's see what we got here. There we are. Hey, everybody. Good to have you with me this evening. That was my bad. I already had the camera running. I just had it off in the software. And uh, anyway, have each and every one of you with us this evening. I hope your evening has been well. As always, it is a pleasure for me to be able to be with you. And with me in the studio is my dad, Beverly, and watching with us is my sister, as always. Good to have each and every one of you guys here, too. Hey, Cousin Mike, how you doing? Hope you and your family are well. Good to have you with us this evening. Uh, also, Aunt Joy and Uncle Jim, good to have you guys watching with us as well. Hey, guys, it got cold, and uh, February came in with a, <laughs> with a vengeance. And uh, this coming week is going to get real cold. Uh, so crank up your heat, crank up your fireplace, uh, whatever it is you crank up to, to stay warm, because uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to feel like winter uh, coming up this coming week for sure. Uh, but I'm thankful to the Lord for his many blessings and thankful for all that he has done. And I'm thankful for each and every one of you. Good to have you guys with us as always every week. I look forward to it, and I hope and pray that each and every one of you do as well. Hey guys, we're going to read some scripture to you from Numbers chapter 14. Uh, we're going to be in the Old Testament. Numbers chapter 14. And uh, I'm going to read them to you from, and, and I'll show you uh, which Bible this is. It is, let me get this over here to the camera. It is the Jewish Study Bible. Let me hold this up there to the camera so you can see it. And uh, on the front of it, it's uh, uh, from the uh, Jewish Publication Society. It's the Tanakh translation, uh, the original Jewish translation. And uh, I'm going to read a few, just a few scriptures to you uh, just to give you a rundown of, of leading up to where we're going to be in verse 11. I believe it's verse 11. Yes, verse 11 uh, is when the children of Israel were brought out of Egypt and they were uh, uh, by Moses and Aaron and they were complaining. They were murmuring they were upset they were irritated things weren't going the way they thought they should have and so they were complaining does any of that sound familiar today and it, you know it won't take you long to figure out that it does a lot of christians are complaining because life isn't going the way they wanted it to it's not the way they planned it uh they're upset and they're irritated and they're complaining and they're lashing out and they're arguing and fighting and everything else just as these people were and uh let me read to you, verse 11, starting in verse 11. We're going to read to you just a, a few uh, verses here. But in verse 11, it says, and if you're joining along with me, uh, just go ahead and leave me a comment to let me know that you're here. And uh, But in verse 11 of Numbers chapter 14, it says, And the Lord said to Moses, <coughs> How long will this people spurn me? And how long will they have no faith in me? Despite all the signs that I have performed in their midst, I will strike them with pestilence and disown them, and I will make of you a nation far more numerous than they. But Moses said to the Lord, When the Egyptians, from whose midst you brought up this people in your might, hear the news, they will tell it to the inhabitants of the land. Now they have heard that you, O Lord, are in the midst of this people, that you, O Lord, appear in plain sight when your cloud rests over them and when you go before them in a pillar of, of cloud by day and in a pillar of fire by night. If then you slay this people to a man, the nations who have heard your fame will say, it must be because the Lord was powerless to bring that people into the land he had promised them on oath that he slaughtered them in the wilderness. Therefore I pray, let my Lord's forbearance be great, as you have declared, saying, The Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness, forgiving iniquity and transgression, yet not rem remitting all punishment, but visiting the iniquity of fathers upon children, upon the third and fourth generations. Pardon, I pray, the iniquity of this people, according to your great kindness, as you, as you have forgiven this people ever since Egypt. 
Now, guys, as I read through those verses, <coughs> excuse me, there's a lot that speaks to me about today. We as Christians seem to complain a lot. We as Christians don't have, and, and we talked about this last week, and I'm going to keep talking about it until we start paying attention. Because the thing is, we're not. We as Christians are doing the direct opposite of what God would have us to do, and then we'll sit back and wonder why God's not blessing. We'll sit back and wonder why God isn't answering prayer, why God isn't moving us from the situation that we're currently in to better days. It's because those better days aren't coming until the Christians grow up. <laughs> until they grow up and start looking to God and stop complaining, stop arguing, stop pointing fingers, stop name-calling, stop being foolish, until that day happens, nothing's going to change. It's only going to get worse. And it's not because of the lost world around us. The lost world around us is going to continue to stay lost because the Christians don't know where they're supposed to be. They don't get it. We've allowed the enemy to blind us to everything around us that we've completely taken our eyes off of God. And I thank the good Lord there's still a few preachers out there that are willing to speak the truth. And there's just a few. <clears throat> the shepherds of the flock have lost direction. They've allowed the wolves around them to dictate that they're supposed to be doing. Even the preachers, some of them, have lost faith in God. Why? Why do I say that? Because of the stupidness that comes out of their mouth. Because of the ignorant stuff they post online. You know, there was a there was a uh, congressman or senator that said, "What what exactly did he say then?" Yeah, pastors and preachers had given up their faith for politics. And I see it every day online. I could name names, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to do that. But it's preachers right here in Lenawee County that supposedly put on Facebook that they care about the Lord, they love the Lord, and they're going to preach his word, but all that ever comes out of their mouth is politics. All that's ever posted to Facebook is politics. It has nothing to do with God. Because if they had faith in God, they wouldn't be saying the things that they say. They wouldn't be freaking out with conspiracy theories. They wouldn't. Let me make it very clear for you guys. <clears throat> when you have faith in God, you don't allow the things of society around you to get you sidetracked and panicked. You don't, because you know who's in control. And as preachers, we know better. We should be preaching God's word. We should be sharing God's word. We should be leading people to the cross. But sadly, the majority is not. The majority is leading people away from the cross because of what they say. Matter of fact, there's one preacher that said, I'm just going to close my Facebook account. Good. That would be the smartest thing you could do. Because I've yet to see anything come out of your Facebook page that points people to the cross. So if you're listening right now, my advice to you is close out your Facebook account. Do us all the favor and close it off. Because you're not pointing people to Jesus Christ. You're pointing people away from him. With your div divisive posts, with your negativity, with your name calling. None of those things are Christ-like. And you say, well, Donnie, what you're doing is, is being negative. No, I'm being honest. And God's word deserves a whole lot more than we're giving him. God's holy scriptures and the calling that God has laid upon us as preachers deserves our full attention. And if we're not going to give that to it, we need to just stop it completely. <laughs> yeah, you'll never lay your calling down, but let me tell you something. You'll give an account for what comes out of your mouth, and you'll give an account for what you post on your social media, and you give an account for how others take what you say 
and apply it to their life or not. That, I can promise you, you will give an account for. And you'll stand before God and give an account to him, not to me, not to any church member. You'll give it to God. The same God that said to Moses that these people are done. And these people God talked about died in the wilderness because of what they did. Now don't sit there and tell me that somehow God's going to overlook that. He didn't overlook what they did. And he won't, I promise you, overlook what you and I are doing. You can take that to the bank, as they used to say. But I can promise you, that'll be a check you will not want to cash. God is long-suffering. God is loving. God is merciful. But God will not be played. God will not be manipulated. God will not be tempted. And God will not be used. We need to stop playing games. We need to stop making our politics bigger than our Christian faith. Did you happen to think that maybe if we as Christians got on our face before God, like Moses did, and prayed for people, that maybe, just maybe, that our nation and our world as a whole would be a little different? Why don't we stop name-calling? <laughs> Why don't we stop arguing, pointing fingers, and being disrespectful and start actually legitimately praying for people? That's the reason for this prayer service every Saturday night. It's not to gather together on Facebook just to take up a, a section of time. It's to gather together to pray, Christians. And if that's not what we're going to do, then why in the world are we even here? Somebody please comment on the side over there. If we're not going to pray for people, then what are we doing? What are we doing? The Bible says we're the salt of the earth. If the salt loses its savor, wherewith will it be salted? It means what good is it? Might as well just throw it out. Christians, we have a responsibility to the blood of Jesus Christ. That is not something we need to take lightly. Now, you can be mad at me. You can be upset with me. <clears throat> you can think that I'm just being off. Oh, he's just being harsh. You can think whatever you want to think. The fact is, God's word, Jesus Christ, the blood that was shed, deserves a lot better than we've been giving him. Plain and simple. Did you happen to notice? My dad was saying this, and he's been saying it for a while, and I've agreed with him. This pandemic covered the world. There's not a corner or a hole on this planet that's not affected by the coronavirus. God's trying to get our attention. The only problem is, sadly, it's not working. Why? Because we've stopped looking to him. Everything that happens, we panic, and all the things that God has shown us in the past, we've forgotten about. All the things that God has brought us through, we have forgotten about those things. And somehow we think now, because of all the stuff that's going on, oh, we're in trouble now. And yeah, you're exactly right, we are in trouble now. But it's not because God's not listening, it's because we're not. We're not listening to him. We're not trusting him. And you can say, oh, I trust the Lord, baloney. Trusting God means that when things don't go your way, you keep trusting him anyway. When things don't go your way, you pray for those that you don't get along with. Did you hear that one? Let me say it again. You pray for those you don't get along with. You pray for those that you don't like. You pray for those that don't like you. You pray for those that hate you and you love them anyway because that's what Jesus Christ would do. So don't give me this baloney that you trust God. I've seen what you post on Facebook. And they don't match up. Yeah, did things go the way I wanted them to? No, they didn't. 
But that doesn't change the fact that I have a responsibility to God first. What God says, God means, and I better be doing it. Or I can't say that I trust him. I can't even say that I love him if I'm not willing to do those things in which he's commanded us to do. You say, yeah, but you don't understand my life. No, I don't have to. You don't understand how bad my life is. Well, let me explain something to you. For six years before my mom passed away, everything was wrong with her. Everything. I'll give you a rundown of some of it. She was legally blind in one eye. She couldn't hear very well. She was deaf in one ear and almost in the other. She couldn't walk due to extreme, undeniable pain. She became bedridden. Anything that she did before that, she had to do in a wheelchair. When she was able to go to church, she still praised God in her wheelchair. With her life not going the way she had, had, had thought in her mind it would be as she went along. She continued to pray that God would heal her. But she trusted and she loved him all the way. Her situation and the outcomes that maybe didn't look like hers from the past that she thought her life would be didn't change her love for Jesus Christ. It didn't change her faith and trust in him. She didn't panic. She wasn't nervous. She loved the Lord. And up until the day she went home to be with him, that never changed. So you can't tell me that it's hard for you to trust God based on your circumstance. See, your love and your trust in Jesus Christ will dictate how you, how you see your circumstances, not the other way around. See, we allow what we see in front of us to dictate how much we trust God. The truth is, it should be the other way around. When you have a trust in God, and you know that no matter what, He's going to take care of it. He's going to take care of you. Then no matter what happens, you never lose that. Guys, understand something. I could care less about conspiracy theories. I could care less about politics. I could care less about any of those things. Because I have decided in my life to trust Jesus Christ. To love Him. To worship Him. And to thank Him for all that He's done. He didn't promise me a perfect life. He didn't promise you one. He didn't promise that everything we ever wanted was going to happen. But what he did promise is that he'd never leave us nor forsake us, even when we forsake him. Being a Christian is not a joke. Being a Christian isn't just something you pick up for the day and set it back down when you no longer need it. Preachers, having a calling is not about preaching what you feel. It's about preaching what God has laid upon your heart. You will never lead a single soul to the cross at Calvary by getting on your soapbox and preaching politics. My advice to you is to get your priorities straight. Figure out who called you and why. And the sooner you realize that, the sooner you'll be of good to those around you. That's best I can tell you. You can serve no purpose when you follow politics and lay down your Christian calling. You've lost your savor. 
Guys, it's time for us to get real, and it's time to get real quick. We're living in a time that requires us to be what God has called us to be. There is a world out there in desperate need of answers, desperate need of prayer, desperate need of Jesus Christ. Where's the Christians at? Please tell me. Please tell me that that's you. Stand up for God. Stop fighting battles he didn't call you to fight. Start preaching God's word. Start sharing God's word. Start praying for those around us. You want a greater nation? Pray for your leaders. I'm not talking about just here in America. I'm talking about all over the world. Pray for your leaders. Yeah, but there th doesn't matter. Pray for them. Because remember, Christian, at one time, we was lost too. Somebody, some real Christian somewhere, prayed for us. And praise the Lord, that's why we're where we're at today. is because of the love and the prayers of real Christians that got us to where we needed to be so Jesus Christ could change our life. Let's get with the program, man. You want politics to change? Pray for your leaders. You want situations to change? Pray about them. And I mean really pray about them. Because the longer that we fight and argue and stop trusting God, remember the scripture, God's long-suffering, God's merciful, God's loving for so long. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Can't get any more clear than that. Let's start doing that. And I can promise you, there's not a coronavirus out there that God can't fix. But we've got to trust him. There's not a divided nation on this planet that God can't fix. But his people, you and I, have got to start praying. We've got to start seeking God. We've got to start turning from our own wicked ways. Then and only then will God hear from heaven and forgive us and heal us. It's not my words. That's God's words. I suggest we start listening to them. Because unless you were under a rock for the last year, you know as well as I do, our whole reality of existence right now has completely been turned upside down. Call it what you want. But I believe with all my heart that God is trying to get our attention. And that starts with you and I as Christians. Let me read through some comments. Uh, as we as we were talking, <coughs> Aunt Joy and Uncle Jim said, "Pray for the families of Tim Fisher and Bob Graff and Tom Tom Neiman, whom all three passed this week. Absolutely, we will. Hey, Sister Mary, good to have you with us. Also, Aunt Joy says, "Pray for our daughter-in-law Kelly, had surgery yesterday. We absolutely will. Uh, my cousin Mike says, asking for prayers for my dad and mom. Absolutely, buddy." We have been doing that. We will continue to do that. Hey, Sister Christine, good to have you with us this evening. <clears throat> and as I said, uh, I believe it was last weekend, that sometimes it doesn't always show up uh, in my comment section over there. Uh, everybody that's joined in with us, and I don't want to miss anybody. Uh, it also doesn't tell me who is currently watching. Um, 
So I, I don't want to miss anybody. So like I, that's why I said if you are watching with us uh, and you haven't commented already, uh, go ahead and let me know that you are watching. And I'd love to welcome you to the broadcast personally. Uh, I don't want to miss that opportunity, and I don't want to leave anybody out. Um, well, like I said, my software doesn't give me who's watching, and I know it does. If you're on a, uh, if you're on your phone or tablet or something like that, it'll tell you uh, in the comments who's watching, even if they don't comment. Uh, so if you are watching, uh, if you could just go ahead, if you'd like to, go ahead and leave me a comment. <laughs> Excuse me, so I can welcome you to the broadcast and 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 thank you guys for being with me. But uh, you know, in all the things that we talked about tonight, guys, is this is that the reason that I'm I'm so passionate and and about doing what God has called us to do is because the world we live in right now, there's so much hate, there's so much divide. There is hardly any love for anyone anymore. And the last thing we need is the Christians on board with that too, adding to the problem. We don't need that. We need Christians to be showing the love of Jesus Christ. And there's only one way to do that, and that is by sharing God's word, by praying for people. The greatest thing you can do for somebody is pray for them. And, you know, if you think, well, you know, I need to, I need to take care of this on my own. No, you don't. Believe me, I tr for years I tried to take care of things in my own life on my own. I only made it worse. Give everything to God. Let God handle those things. Let God take care of it. He's the only one that can. But we need to trust him, not doubt him. Well, what if? That's a doubt. Let me ask you this. In all of the things that you've gone through in your life, has God ever let you down, Christian? <laughs> has he ever let you down? Has he ever not come through for you? Has he ever left you to face something on your own? And the answer to that is no. So why in the world would he start now? Why would God bring you and I as far as we are today just to go, oh, you're on your own? COVID-19 hit. You're all done, guys. Good luck with that on your own. We'll see you later. No, he's never done that. But we act as if he has. We act as if, well, I don't know if God can bring us through this one. Boy, this is pretty big. When his word, it says, with God, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. God even said, with man, this would be impossible. But with God, it's possible. Here's the thing, guys. As long as we try to keep doing this on our own, we're going to fail. We're going to prolong things. We're going to run into issues. We're going to have more questions than answers. But when we choose to trust God, even when we can't see the outcome, we choose to trust Him, knowing that He can. That's where it's at. Trusting God. The Bible says to become like a child. What does that mean? When you're a child, <clears throat> anything your parents tell you to do, trust me. You know, for example, uh, uh, if you were somewhere and you had to jump to your parents, and they said, trust me, I'll catch you. You do it. We got a call. Give me just one second here. Let me turn on the, the microphone to this. Let's call. Hey, 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 hey. Hi, it's me. <laughs> um, uh, today I just, uh, I have two prayer requests. I have one for, for Tony and Mike Soto. I was talking to them today, and I told them that I would share their, share them on, on the prayer request tonight. Uh, Tony, she's got a, she still has really bad pain in the lower part of her back and in her hip. And uh, she really wants to have prayer that God will touch that and heal that for her. And uh, her and Mike, uh, Tuesday, uh, have to go to uh, the heart specialist for their annual checkup. So she wants us to pray for them for that as well. And then on the 18th, uh, Mike's got to go to his doctor to see if he still needs to be on his, uh, on his, uh, um, his breathing uh, for, his, for, the, for the coronavirus he had. Uh, they, they think that he'll probably be able to, to, to get off of it. 
and because he's doing, uh, Tony said he's doing very good. He's doing really good. So that's on, on the 18th. And I was also talking to Dottie Barrett today, and she said her legs and her lower pa uh, back is really painful. She said, Vanessa, if I didn't have that, I could get around pretty good. So uh, if you could just definitely remember her, it's, it's so bad that she can't really walk that well because of it. So if you could just remember both all three of those people in your prayers, uh, they would really appreciate it. Because I tell you what, like you said, God can definitely can definitely heal them and take care of them, just like he already has. So just pray for them. And, and I have things going on in, in my life with my physical knees with my legs and things, and God knows all about them. So just always remember me in your prayers as well. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 All right, guys. All right, you, guys. Uh, if you uh, and I was I, I was, was I was going to say that later on, later on but I'm thankful my sister called in uh, for, for sister sister, sister, Tony, and sister Tony and brother Mike and sister Dottie. And sister Dottie. So, if guys, so if you guys uh, write down your uh, write down request, prayer request, request whatever, maybe, whatever maybe, maybe let me turn off the other mic, mic as we might be getting feedback. Um, but what, however you write down your prayer requests, keep track of those. Go ahead and add those in there. Also, sister Christine says, pray for my daughter, looking her husband level stage four stomach cancer. Same daughter with the babies will actually be absolutely uh, pray for my daughter losing her husband. Stomach cancer level stage four, the same one with my baby. Absolutely. Uh, we will remember her and your and her family and your family as well, uh, that the Lord will help each and every one of you guys. Uh, we're hearing an echo. Yeah, that was probably Aunt Joy when I had the phone system mic still on. Uh, so I went ahead and turned that off. Um, make sure the monitors are down. Um, that was most likely why you were hearing an echo uh, was because of that. Uh, but no, just continue to remember those prayer requests. Like I said, all of those and all of them that are posted here tonight, um, go ahead and write those down, print them off, however you do that uh, to keep up with those. And we need to pray for those daily. Uh, also, uh, let's pray for our churches. You, you know, the, the churches that are preaching the gospel, that are standing upon the word of God. That God will continue to bless and to grow those churches. And those churches that are preaching more of everything else and less of Jesus Christ. That God will convict them and get them back to where they need to be. Because right now, as I was saying before the phone call, we need people who are going to share Jesus Christ. Put their, their personal feelings to the side and say, Lord, help me to help others. Help me to reach others with the message of the cross. Help me to show the world who you are. We need some Christians like that. We need some Christians that will hold the banner of Jesus Christ. That will march forward with what thus saith the word of God. That's what we need. We need preachers again. We need preachers that are focused on God's word, not on politics. We need people who are willing to say, Jesus Christ loves you. And so do I. I'm hoping that'll be us. Now tonight, and maybe in the last few weeks, you've become very irritated with me. Well, I don't apologize for sharing God's word. I don't apologize for standing upon the principles of God's word. And I never will. If that irritates you or that angers you, I'll be praying for you. Even though you may be mad at me, I still care about you. And I'll continue to care about you. And I'll continue to pray for you. So guys, let's take care of each other. Let's do what we can for Jesus Christ. Let's trust him. Let's commit to him. Let's stay focused. Let's stay active in the Christian life. Tonight, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer right now, as wherever you are. As I say this every week, wherever you are, pray from your heart. And know that when you're praying that God is hearing your prayer. Trust Him in His timing and in His answers. His answers may not always look like what you and I thought it should, but He knows what's best for us. He knows what's best for the situation. So let's trust Him. Even if the outcome doesn't look like we hoped it would have. Let's trust him because he knows what's best. 
as we pray together wherever you are. Dear Heavenly Father, dear God, we're thankful again for this wonderful opportunity to be able to gather together, dear God, here online. And dear Jesus, I'm asking right now for each prayer request that was spoken here tonight for Kelly, dear God, and she had surgery. I pray that you'll be with her as she recovers, dear God. I pray that you'll be with my Uncle David and my Aunt Sherry. Dear God, you know what the need there is. I pray you'll be with Christine's daughter, dear Jesus. Help them and help her and her family, dear God, as they move forward in the loss of her husband. I pray, dear God, you'll be with Brother Mike and Sister Tony and Sister Dottie, dear God, and their health concerns and their health issues that they're facing. I pray, dear God, that you'll strengthen them and continue to touch and to heal. Dear God, we're so thankful for all that you have done, and we're thankful for all that you're going to do. And dear God, I pray tonight for those, dear God, that have chosen to do things outside of faith in you. I pray, dear God, for conviction in their life that you'll bring them back to an understanding that they can do nothing outside of you, dear God. And I pray that you'll be with the preacher, dear God, of these churches. I pray, dear God, each and every one of us that you'll open our eyes to what the calling really means that you've laid upon us. I pray, dear God, that we'll lay aside our politics and our petty differences and our arguments and our divisive behavior and we'll start back to where we need to be and where we should be, which is on a path of the cross sharing Jesus Christ and the blood that was shed. I pray, dear God, that the churches will be the churches that you died for us to be. I pray, dear God, that we'll stop playing games and we'll stop messing around like we have been. And that will be what you died for us to be. Dear God, I pray that you'll be with us. And I pray from the bottom of my heart, dear God, that you'll forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for our failures. Forgive us of our own. And help us, dear God, to be who you need us to be. Who our communities need us to be. Help us to always share the gospel first. Help us to stand upon your word always. And to stay faithful in knowing that with you, nothing is impossible. Be with my sister, dear God. Continue to touch her and to heal her. Dear God, there are so many that are suffering tonight. You know who they are, dear Jesus, and I pray that you'll help them. You'll help them and you'll guide them each and every day. Dear God, we will forever praise you, worship you, and love you. Because it's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you so much for being here this evening. Um, it's always, as I said, it's always a, uh, an honor and a privilege of ours to be able to be with you. Uh, hey, Sister Gloria and Brother Mike, good to have you guys with us. Yes, prayers for both of you guys as well, that the Lord will touch you guys. Thank you so much for being with me this evening, each and every one of us. Also, as always, if you haven't already, uh, go ahead and like our Facebook page, click the little thumbs up, then click the bell next to it. And that way you can be notified every single time we go live and everything that we upload to our Facebook page at Adrian FFWB. And uh, that way you'll be in the know about everything and you can stay up to date on all of that stuff. Also over on our YouTube channel, if you haven't already, go over there and click the subscribe button. Click the little bell next to that. And you'll also be notified every single time we upload a video to our YouTube channel. And as I said, every one of these live broadcasts at the end of the broadcast, uh, the recorded version of this, which is happening at the same time as the live stream, is uploaded to our YouTube channel. And so if you missed some of this broadcast, you can check it out over there. Or you can check it out on our church's Facebook page as well. It'll be there for a little while. I also upload it once it's to YouTube. I upload it to our church's website at adrianffwb.org. Also, with that being said, our podcast over there. The Weekend Word, you can check that out on our church's website, adrianffwb.org. Click on the podcast link, and there's 11 episodes there so far that you can download, stream, take them with you wherever you go. But that's The Weekend Word, and if you get time to be able to swing over there and check that stuff out, I would greatly appreciate that as well. And I hope those, <coughs> those study notes and those podcasts speak to your heart and help you in your daily walk with Jesus Christ. Guys, 
Uh, as always, it is always a pleasure on behalf of my dad, Beverly, my sister watching with us, and each and every one of us here at the Age First Free Will Baptist Church. You are a blessing. Thank you so much for being here weekend and week out, joining with us, being a part of these broadcasts, and just doing what you do for our church and our church's social media. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, continue to share Jesus Christ this week. Continue to do all that we can for the Lord. They said we can open churches again. I miss it. Yes, they have said that, and they never closed it to begin with. Uh, the reason that we did is due to a health concern uh, with new variants and that kind of thing. We didn't want to take any chances uh, with our older population of getting people sick. Uh, and so, yes, we do miss it, but we don't feel that we can gather together safely at the moment. Uh, so we are going to continue to do live streaming. We miss it greatly, but we've got to take into concern and, and under uh, regulation that we uh, keep everybody safe. And uh, right now with the new variants as close as Washington County, we don't want to take any chances. I know the vaccines are out, and uh, sooner than later we're going to get most everybody vaccinated. Um, they're not sure how that will react to the new variants. Uh, we keep up with the news every day locally uh, to see what we're looking at. And, uh, you know, so right now, uh, we're going to continue to live stream. We will keep you up to date on when a, a date for return to in-person is. Just bear with us. Um, we can serve the Lord wherever we are. So, yes, we do miss seeing each and every one of you. But at the same time, we believe that the Lord wants us to be cautious in taking care of one another and keeping each other safe. And uh, so we're going to continue to uh, do the live stream. Uh, but we will be, just rest assured, we will be back to church in person uh, just as soon as humanly possible, and we feel that it's safe enough to be able to do that here in Lenawee County. So just bear with us, continue to bear with us, continue to join with us here uh, live. Also, guys, and I even hate to say this, and I know my dad hates for me to have to say this, but <laughs> I know we're not in church, but there are bills at the church to keep the lights on, keep the heat running. So if you haven't already, and you normally do, like I said before, do not send your tithe checks or offerings to the church address because that mailbox only gets checked about once a week. And uh, we don't want them just sitting out there. So if you're doing that, go ahead and send them directly to 538 State Street, Adrian, Michigan, 49221. And so I, I understand that we are live streaming, uh, but there are still... Uh, uh, costs uh, at the church. So please go ahead and do that. Cri Sister Christine says, I can't take it. The stuff it's made with, I'm allergic to it. That's the thing. And there's been a lot of allergic reactions. Um, so in that case, I mean, the, the biggest thing is to try to, to not congregate around people. And so uh, I am sorry to hear about that, uh, Sister. But um, hopefully they can come up with a way that will help people that are allergic to some of that stuff. And, uh, you know, we were talking at work because we're going to be getting it where I work. And uh, I've had a few people ask me, do you know if you're allergic to any of it? And I said, no, because <laughs> I've never had it before. It's probably been a decade since I've had a flu shot. Um, so I, I don't know how I'll react to it. I guess I'll find out. <laughs> I have had a, a told a coworker that if anything does happen, he can drag me uh, wherever I need to go. Uh, Lord willing, nothing no allergic reaction happened with that. Um, but I'm going to trust the Lord that he He knows what's far greater than I do. And so I'm, I'm trusting in him that he's going to point me in the right direction and uh, do what I need to do. And, and so I'm just going to continue to to trust in him and, and we need to continue to pray about it. I know there's a lot of misinformation rolling around. There's a lot of things that people, you know, can get into other people's psyche about it, you know, because it's new. I get that. And I'm not, uh, you know, pushing for it or pushing against it, you know, to each their own and however they feel about doing that. You know, I've had my own, my own questions about it, my own concerns about it. But at the same time, you know, the, the bigger issue is, uh, you know, dealing with COVID, should you come in contact with it, it's probably going to be far worse than any side effect you get from the vaccine. So that's the way I look at it. That's just my own personal, uh, my own personal view of it. That's not allocating for or against with anybody else. Like I said, that's something you're going to have to figure out on, you know, up to you personally, but that's how I view it. 
and and working where I work around people and around uh, you know in a school, you know it, it's it's better for me to to take the the precautions necessary. So uh, just continue. Let's just continue to pray for each other. Let's continue to pray that God's will will be done in all of this, and and we know it'll be done right if we do that. So let's continue to pray for that. Pray for our healthcare workers, doctors, nurses, hospital staff nursing home staff, uh, the residents at the hospital and at nursing homes, adult care facilities, uh, our front, our first responders, police, firemen, EMS. Uh, let's pray for them. They're on the front lines trying to protect the communities in which they live and caring for those that they are uh, taking care of. So let's continue to pray for them that God will protect them each and every day. <coughs> also, I am thankful for... Uh, all that the Lord has done for everything that he has allowed in these live broadcasts, guys. You know, when we started live broadcasting, it was from a tablet, you know, my iPad. The very first time, to, uh, it was March 22nd, uh, was our, our very first live stream. And uh, it was done from an iPad. And the Lord has blessed us to be able to be where we are today with, uh, you know, HD. And, I, and I'm going to just, I'm going to just, you know, Talk up the Lord here for just a second on everything that he's provided. We've got HD cameras in the studio. We've got professional broadcasting mics, professional uh, monitors, professional soundboard, uh, computer system. God has given so much for us to be able to take his word to a worldwide platform. And I'm so thankful for that. None of this stuff is because of me. None of this stuff is because of my dad or anybody else. All of this stuff is because God has provided an opportunity and an avenue to to be able to receive it and to be able to use it. And I'm so thankful for that because that's what these broadcasts are for. They're for Jesus Christ and promoting the word of God. And I'm so thankful for that. And I'm so thankful for each and every one of you. So guys, join us tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock for Worship Live right here on Facebook. Invite everybody on your friends list to come and be with us. And I know it will be a blessing to them. I'm looking forward to it and I hope you are as well. Hey, Sister Helen and Pastor Austin, good to have you guys with us. Love you guys as well. And I know, I know, I probably missed some people, so I want to scroll up here. Nope, I didn't. <laughs> so most of you probably noticed when I took a drink, I went I went big today with my 55, <laughs> 55 ounces of Mountain Dew. And I know there'll be some of you go, that's not Well, it beats being irritated all the time, so I drink my Mountain Dew to keep me sane and under control and uh that's you know that's my uh that's my comedy for the day um but yeah 55 ounces of good old mountain dew i know some people drink coffee uh that is not for me i, I do drink a cappuccino every now and then but i am I, I am a mountain dew drinker and i know there will be many people that will comment and tell me how bad that is for me and i understand that but uh boy it's good when it's cold so i <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thank you guys again for being here this evening. I love you guys. I'm always praying for you. You guys mean so much to me, and I'm so thankful to have each and every one of you in my life. Thankful to call each and every one of you my family. I love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow afternoon at 1. Until then, let's take care of each other. Let's love each other. Let's lift up Jesus Christ and trust him always in everything that we do. God bless you guys. Have a great rest of your evening, and we'll talk to you soon.